Hi, welcome to my talk. I'm, my name is Thomas Hood. I'm working for Red Hat. And I hope you basically all know what QMU is about. So who, who used QMU before? Just raise your hand. OK, who's just here because um, you were too lazy to leave? OK, at least two. <laughs> That's great. OK, so QMU is, a, is basically an emulator. It emulates 21 different CPU architectures and has support for a couple of um, CPU virtualization frameworks like KVM, hypervisor framework on macOS, and some others. Um, QMU does three releases a, le a year, and a major version is bumped at the beginning of each year, so QMU is not do doing any semantic versioning or something like that. And this talk will cover the, the last year, so that means I will talk about QMU 7.1, 7.2, and 8.0. If you're interested, um, the schedules are available in the wiki, so if you're curious when the next version will be released, just um, have a look at this URL that I listed here. Um, the next uh, release will be QMU version 1. So let's jump into it. What's new in QMU 7.1? So I have to say QMU is a huge project, so each release contains a lot of new features, a lot of new stuff. And um, of course I cannot mention everything in, in a, in a 10, 10 or 15 minutes talk. So I had to pick some few, but that doesn't mean that the other features are less important. One of the big things that have been added in QMU 7.1 is the so-called long arc 64 um, um, support. Um, the long arc 64 is a new RISC CPU by, by the Longxin um, technology company. It's a Chinese company. And it says it's said to be a, a little bit a mixture of RISC V and MIPS. And um, QMU now supports both uh, full system emulation with the QMU system uh, long arc 64 um, command. It emulates a power virtualized machine there. And you can also run the, the Linux binaries for this architecture directly on a Linux host, for, for example, on your x86 Linux host uh, with the user mode binary emulator. That's the long, uh, long dash, uh, QMU dash long arc 64 command. I also got a quick example, but I'd like to do it at the end, uh, depending on how, how much time we will have left. Um, another great, cool new feature in, in QMU 7.1 is the zero copy send um, migration feature. And this allows you, when you migrate a guest in QMU from one QMU instance to the other, you know, um, QMU normally has to copy the, the guest pages before sending them over. And with this feature, you can um, skip this copy step. So it reduces the CPU usage on the, ho on the host quite a bit. The disadvantage is it needs support for locked memory on, on, the, on the host, so it only works um, with Linux. And if you want to use it, um, you can use this. Oh, where's my mouse? This HMP is for human monitor protocol, so this, this is uh, the built-in shell, you could say, for, of QMU. You can use it with this migrate set capability, zero copy send on command. Or if you're using libert, um, you'd say versh migrate and then dash dash zero copy to, to it. Now, QMU does not only add stuff. We are also removing some, some older features since um, at one point in time the, the code base would become unmaintainable otherwise. And one of the um, older thi things that were uh, in QMU since quite a while already is the, the dash sound HV command line option. Um, this, is, this was used to configure the, the sound hardware in the guest. But it was considered legacy. It ha didn't have the possibility to, um, to connect it to, to, a, um, to a backend on the host, for example. So um, it's now advised to use the dash device and dash audio dev command line options. Or if you want to do it in short, there's a new dash audio uh, command line option where you can do both now in, in one command. So if you were using dash sound HV SB16, for example, in the past to uh, configure a sound blaster 16 device in your guest, you would now do dash audio and then PA for pulse audio on the host side. So that's the host backend. Then comma model equals SB16, and this will configure a 
Sol Buster 16, I guess. So this one command now wires up the guest side and the host side. QMU 7.2. So QMU has a bunch of network backends um, that allow you to, to send the network traffic from the, from the guest to, to another place. And it had um, the possibility to, to tunnel the network traffic from the guest via a socket since quite a while already. But this only supported internet sockets. And a couple of people were asking about um, the possibility to use Unix sockets too. So uh, QMU 7.2 int introduced new, uh, two new net network backends. There's a uh, native stream for connection-based protocols, and you would say now dash netf stream, and then you say address type is a Unix socket now, and you can configure the path. On the client side, so the other QMU that you want to connect to it, you do basically the same, just say server equals off. And you can also use uh, datagram-based protocols, like in, in the example here below, um, depending on what, what you prefer. Another thing that has been changed in 7.2 is the uh, user mode emulation binaries for x86. They now default to a different CPU type. So a couple of uh, Linux distros recently switched to, an, to a higher level of the x86 architecture, you could say. So this is the x86-64 version 2 level, which require... Um, so th these binaries, for example, require some SSE extensions or stuff like that, which might not be available in older CPU models. And so that you are able to, to run these binaries out of the box, um, QM, you know, defaults here to the, to the maximum CPU model. So that, that's, that gives you all the features that QMU supports. And again, cleanups. In 7.2, we removed the so-called slurp submodule from, from the repository. This doesn't mean we remove the feature, it just means um, we remove the, the code. So uh, for historical reasons, QMU shipped the Slurp code in, in its own repository and in the Torballs. Um, but in recent, recent years, all Linux and other distributions caught up and um, supply the Slurp code as a, as a proper packaged library. Um, so Takeaway here is please install libslurp devil before you compile new QMU versions if you still want to use the dash netdev user for, for configuring your network backend. Or there's another new alternative called PAST, which you can use also instead. Um, this is an external program, um, so um, you basically connect a, a dash netdev socket that program and it will take care of, um, of, of handling the, the network packages. By the way, there, there's, an, there's a talk about PASTA, so that's the sister project of PAST tomorrow. If you're interested in that, um, be sure not to miss it. QMU 8.0, so um, there were many improvements again. Um, I just wanted to list a few um, risk five Gain support for ACPI. Um, on x86, you can now pass a random seed to the Linux kernel when you use the, when you load the kernel with the dash kernel command of com, um, QMU. We've got now support for, for compact flash card um, emulation. And there's, there have been quite a bit of performance improve, improvements in, in TCG. So that's the tiny code generator, the, the JIT engine of, of QMU. The backend now there supports a couple of CPU extensions if they are available. And as always, we did also some cleanups here. And this time we removed the Word IOFS daemon from the repository. Since there's now a new implementation um, that's, that has been rewritten in Rust and it has become quite mature in, in, the, in, the, in the last month. So the decision has been made to to remove the old implementation that was written in, in plain C. Okay, I think I was fast enough. So before we go to the questions, I can show you the example. So this is my normal laptop. Oh, wait, this is useless. This is my normal laptop here. So you can see it's um, x86 machine. And 
I cannot remember the options. So if I want to emulate this new system now, I download a kernel. So I, I mentioned in, in the slides where to get the kernel, the init RD and uh, the firmware for that. You can start it like this. It runs through the firmware. It boots a system, so it just drops into the init RD shell here. And if I know, can you see it? I hope yeah. so. Great. And as you can see, I've got now an emulated long arc system here. Works. Full software emulation. <laughs> yeah, full software emulation, of yeah. course. Okay, and that's pretty all from my side. So let me go back to the slides. Uh. Questions? <laughs> yes, please. I haven't looked at the socket implementation. I know that. Oh, the question was um, whether there's a, um, when when using this new um, socket implementation for the backends, whether um, there's a kind of multiplexing server in between when you can connect three or more. You, I, I guess. Um, I'm not aware of um, a multiplexing server in between or something like that. I know that at least the internet sockets were, are able to do multicast, so you could um, multicast to multiple QMS. I haven't looked that up in the, in the new implementation, uh, but I guess they would be able to do that too, hopefully. So yeah, the answer is multicast. Any other questions? Okay. Then thanks for your attention. Oh, thank you.